Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. It's spring officially here in Oregon, and one of the official activities for springtime is a picnic. And frequently at picnics, we have deviled eggs. Now, I'm not a very good cook, but I am a wood turner. So I'm going to make my version of deviled eggs. Let's do it. For this project, I selected two pieces of walnut. I glued these together with brown craft paper in between for a split turning. After the glue was thoroughly dry, I mounted it between centers, being very careful to put the points exactly on the glue line, then on to the usual roughing out. I made sure I did not reduce the diameter too much to allow for a tenon to mount the blank to my four jaw chuck. After remounting the wood in the chuck, I continued the roughing out with the tailstock in place for a bit of safety. For marking out, I would usually mark one half of the diameter, or the radius, along the length as the point of maximum diameter. Then measure 1.3 times the diameter for the overall length. Instead, this time I had the idea to use my golden mean calipers to mark out the egg size. So I measured the diameter with the short portion of the calipers, then I laid out the calipers along the length to mark the length of the diameter. That's when I realized that the long distance was not going to work. So I switched to the long gap for the overall length, then divided the first mark in half. But that did not look right, so I made adjustments by eye. Next time, I'll forget the golden mean calipers. Then on to shape the egg by eye. Eggs vary, so as long as I get the length and the wide port point relative to the diameter, I'm happy. Then after sanding up through the grits, I'm finishing the egg with Mylan's friction polish. When parting off the egg, I deliberately left a short straight nub on the top, instead of parting it off close to the top of the egg. You'll see why a bit later. Next, I'll mount it into my egg chuck to finish the end. I'm using the short nub to center the egg in the chuck. The larger nub than on my previous eggs definitely helped center it better. Then sand and finish the small end, blending the curve with sandpaper and blending in the finish. I used a thin putty knife to split the egg in half along the paper joint. Now, how do you get the yolk out of a wooden egg to devil it? My first thought was to use CA glue to mount a piece of scrap honey locust to a wood faceplate that still has a small remaining piece of wood on it. A rubber stopper on the tailstock provided security against the fresh CA glue failing. Then after some shaping of the yolk, sanding and finishing, I parted off the half round. By the way, it's not a perfect half sphere. I wanted it somewhat flattened. For the second yoke, I decided to try double stick tape to fasten the paduk instead of CA glue. Again, I used the rubber stopper on the live center. For me, this is a requirement, at least until the shape is roughed out. After shaping, sanding, and finishing, I pried off the finished piece with my skew. Please don't get mad at me for using a skew this way. After sanding and finishing the flat middles of the egg halves, I buffed all surfaces with Tripoli, White Diamond, and Carnauba Wax for a nice shine.
Finally, I roughed the egg half just a little in the middle to ensure the glue would grab. Then a little medium CA glue fastens the yolk to the egg half. And voila! A serving of deviled eggs. I'm not a termite, so I will not be eating these. I'm sure I could have quite a variety of flavors of deviled eggs in short order. What flavor do you like? A split turning does not always come quickly to mind, but I think it worked well in this case. That's all for this video. Please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Please always wear your full face shield. There's more at risk than just your eyes. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns.